Happy New Day, everyone. Thank you for tuning in and watching. I'm clearing out some of this energetic constipation. Psychic and Spiritual Attacks Part 2. If you didn't watch the first video, I would suggest you watch that one. I talk about what I put in the description of it. All right, so let's get into it. We all have been conditioned to be victims. That's, that's just what it's about. We all have been conditioned to blame others and not really look at ourselves. And it's become normal. It's, it's been happening for a very long time. And there are a lot of agendas that are still pushing that whole victim, blame, guilt, all of that type energy. And we're moving into a time to where that's not really conducive to our mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual growth. We have to start realizing and really accepting that we are all of it. We are not just victims. We're not just receivers of, of energy. You know, we, we are the attackers as well. We are the senders. We are the, the cops and the robbers. We're all of it. And yeah, a lot of people don't want to hear that. I, I understand. But for those that are at that point or getting to that point of saying, I really got to let this stuff go. You can't really let it all go and get it out of you just by being one-sided. You, you have to accept the dualistic nature of, of who you are. So in the first video, I spoke about attacks coming from family members, friends, those closest to us. And of course, there are many attacks that are coming from people that you may not even know, people that may know of you and they're just watching you with an evil eye and, you know, they're, they're in the distance somewhere, but they're focused, they're attention on you and their energy on you to send you that that negative energy so that was that video in this video it's time to look at you me the starting point there's two sayings one is the world does not revolve around you and the other one is you are not the center of the universe I no longer agree with that I'm sorry I can't I can't because I look at so much variety I, I look at so much individuality and uniqueness and I see a different blueprint in each person each person I see just outside is a is a different person and each person has their own reality each person is is a walking universe each person is in their own world literally and when I look at a blueprint it's kind of hard not to see that because everyone has their own lane. Everyone has their own trajectory 
and their own way in which they are designed to move through their life and see the things they're supposed to see, have the types of experiences that are for them, meet certain types of people. There's a, a, a pattern to each person. So I look at people and I see that, oh, this person thinks in a certain type of way. And this person over here thinks in a completely different type of way. And we all have had situations to where we have come across people that have ways of thinking that completely baffle us. It's like, wow, you that's how you think? That's what you believe? And usually what we do, we think that there's something wrong with that other person. We may think that they're stupid or think that because they don't think like us, that is something wrong with them. But it's just that whatever circumstances have happened in their life, whatever their their makeup is, it causes them to see a certain reality that may be completely foreign to you. And we, we know that this is true just by different regions on the planet. So everyone is the center of the universe. Everyone does have a world that revolves around them. And when you understand that and then ultimately accept it, then you have to see that whatever happens in a person's reality is based on them being the starting point. They are the originating point of whatever comes to them. And that includes these psychic and spiritual attacks. Now, the next part that I want to talk about, I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible. If you have your human design chart, you'll notice that you have two sides. You have a side that is black and that is the conscious side the personality side and then you have a side that's red that's the unconscious side that's the design side so the design side deals with your body the conscious personality side deals with your mind your consciousness so I know I've said this before but just to reiterate our minds and our bodies are two different types of consciousnesses your mind is always thinking in a certain way that is something completely different than what your body is doing and that's why our bodies always tend to feel ways in which our minds are not in alignment with so you may mentally say, I need to get up and go to work today, but your body just wants to lay in the bed. That's just an example of how that red side and that black side are completely separate. They have their own ways of operating and it causes a lot of issues in the way in which we operate because your body's intelligence, your body's consciousness has no connection to your mind's consciousness. So we only operate being aware of that black side, that conscious side, which is the mind only. So human design is a tool that helps you to integrate understanding that your body has its own consciousness. You learn how to tune into your body's consciousness you tune into the way in which your body is designed to operate and observe with your mind as opposed to letting your mind dictate the way in which you are moving in life. That's why so many people have resistance because we have been mentally programmed to operate in ways that are completely against whatever the body's design is 
So I hope that made sense. But if it didn't, it will one day. That's all that matters. All right, so we have two aspects, our conscious and our unconscious. That means that everybody is receiving spiritual attacks, psychic attacks unconsciously and also sending out spiritual and psychic attacks unconsciously because everyone has an unconscious that has a, a whole design that they are consciously unaware of. So for instance, let's use a, a serious, a serious situation. There are a lot of children who are kidnapped or assaulted or, you know, in that realm of things, there are a lot of children that are targeted by pedophiles and people of that nature. And there's a reason for that. And it all deals with them being the originating point of their reality. Even though it's an innocent child who doesn't know any better, that child has a whole aspect of them that is an unconscious aspect that is operating all the time, just like the conscious aspect is. So I'll use an example that I've had to share with some parents. In our body graphs, in our human design blueprints, we have what's called the channel of mating. And this channel is specifically designed for sex and reproduction. Every, everyone, whether you have it activated in your design or not, everyone has this built into them. Now, for someone who has this activated, whether it's on the conscious side of their design or the unconscious side of their design, it's still it's still beaming, it's still operating. So if there's a, a child that's walking down the street that has the channel of mating activated within their blueprint, then they're gonna automatically attract people who either don't have that in their design, that, that activation within their design, or they're going to attract people who do have it. So either way, there's going to be a sexual energy coming off of that child. Now, for a child who doesn't have it activated in their design, if there happens to be a pedophile nearby watching these two different children and one has that heightened sexual energy that just happens to be activated in their design, that pedophile is going to focus more on that child with the channel of mating as opposed to the other child who doesn't have it. This is just an example, but this is something that happens all the time. And this is a way to understand and see how beneficial and important it is to know what you have operating in you, what activations you have that are conscious and what activations are unconscious. So unconsciously, this child with the channel of mating is putting out signals. Their body is putting out signals saying, hey, I'm, I'm open for a sexual activity, even though consciously she just, you know, wants to play at the playground. So psychic attacks are taking place already because this, this pedophile that may be watching this child is, is throwing throwing that energy at her and she's getting it but she's also throwing energy out as well and then of course you don't know what else is going on you know with the environment that the child lives in you you have no idea so there are a lot of different factors that actually create these psychic and spiritual attacks and a lot of them even though they may be conscious a lot of them start off unconscious because we all were children. 
all of us had psychic and spiritual things going on at an early age when we didn't have that awareness so whatever we're playing out now as adults when we can say oh yeah i'm being psychically and spiritually attacked by my family and friends or you know all of that is really secondary all of that is is after the foundational stages all of that is after you being the starting point you being the originating point and the center of your world and your universe so let's fast forward let's take this child who was a victim of sexual molestation at an early age let's fast forward into her being 21 years old so she has this energetic stain on her and she doesn't understand so she's been carrying this as she has developed into an adult so now she's experienced being in multiple relationships being in abusive relationships being dumped um being sexually abused by by boyfriends she's experienced a lot of different things that have stemmed from this early situation that took place that imprinted her with this energetic and psychic energy that caused her to psychologically operate differently than what she would have if she would have not been exposed to that situation and not been a part of um that scenario so she's an adult now and she has attracted even more situations she still has those activations in her blueprint so she has that along with the situation from early childhood so she's attracted men that may actually represent the pedophile she's attracted that and she's building her life based on this so there is something in her because she has now been a portal way she has been a, a human gateway for the lower realms of these particular activations within her design so now she's this open gateway and these entities are just you know they're they're just using her they're they're just continuously creating scenarios to keep this energy going because she just so happens to ha have these activations so now those activations are being used for the detrimental aspects of them so when you look at your human design chart you'll see all of these numbers those numbers are gates aka gateways each one of those gates goes into a exalted aspect or the detrimental aspect you can call it good bad positive negative whatever you want to you know call it to show the dualistic nature of those things so when it comes to the channel of mating there are exaltations when it comes to reproduction mating bringing life into the world that that's a very beautiful energy that brings life here but for this particular young lady it was tainted very early so her movement in life is still operating based on that activation those activations but now her trajectory has moved more onto the detrimental side because she can't see the exaltations in those activations and remember she's not even she's not conscious of this she's just operating unconsciously in the lower realms of these activations so 
she's still the center of of her universe she's still the center of her of her world and she's attracting others who resonate with those lower vibrations so she's a originating point for all types of lower vibrational sexual abusive activity to take place she's grown now she doesn't know anything about taking responsibility for what has happened to her how was that going to make sense when all she knows is that she was stripped of of her innocence at an early age how was that going to register for her by the time she's grown and has gone through many other scenarios that are reflections and directly connected to that situation from her childhood and this is what many adults deal with and then we're in a world that tells us that it's somebody else's fault that you are not the center of the universe and the world does not revolve around you it's very difficult for people to say that oh i am something within me caused that situation to happen when i was so young and innocent it's very difficult it's very difficult to take responsibility for something coming at you that hurts you when you have no idea who you are you have no idea what type of energy you possess that even attracted that to you I thought about a situation that happened to me when I was in third grade I'm gonna shift the energy here a little bit we were outside for recess and I don't know what I was doing I was by myself but other people other children were playing around me but I wasn't playing with anyone I just know that I was standing there and I just turned around this is a a big parking lot I turned around and there was a baseball coming straight from my face and I got hit right in the middle of my forehead with the baseball <laughs> now anybody will say oh you were an innocent victim of getting hit by a baseball but realistically it's like well I was there I was standing there I was in the way now the person that threw it he didn't mean to hit me he, he just had a bad throw to who he was playing catch with and now that I'm aware of this whole idea of taking responsibility and you are the originating point okay I'm the originating point of my universe I'm the the world my world revolves around me this baseball came into my world um yep I, that I did that I did that I was there you know because if if I was anywhere else on this spacious parking lot I I wouldn't have been in the way <laughs> I would have gotten hit right in the middle of my face by a baseball so it's not gonna be easy especially if you know if if you happen to be a person who's used to pointing the finger and, and blaming and saying they did it he did it she did it you know if you're used to that it's not going to feel comfortable hearing this message because this message is saying hey you know if you really want to gain access to your power you have to really get past that you have to say you know okay that did happen to me that attack came but what was going on within me you know what why was I even affected by that type of attack why are my feelings hurt right now you know that's what I asked myself like why do why do I feel some type of way that I just I just got attacked by you know that verbal comment or if I receive a, a psychic attack and I you know hear somebody's thoughts and I'm like dang I didn't know you felt like that about me <laughs> it's like you know it made sting a little bit like dang I thought we were friends <laughs> but ask yourself you know 
why did that hurt? You know, why did that feel like that? And what I did, you know, I, I reflected on, on some situations and I wrote down, um, some of the things that I have done energies that I have put out based on things that I received. So, for instance, I have played out a lot in my life trying to be a people pleaser. And I asked myself, where, where did that come from? Why? And when I asked myself that question, I remember being like 10 or 11 years old and walking down the street and thinking about how sad all of the grown-ups seemed to be, like including my parents. Like it just seemed like all of the grown-ups were sad. And all I knew was they're sad because they have bills to pay. Like they have, they don't have enough money. So I remember saying at that age that I need to become a millionaire so that I can pay people's bills. It's still clear as day. Like for me, that was the way to make everyone happy is for me to become a millionaire. And then I saw myself just going to, you know, different people's houses and saying, hey, you know, here's here's money for your bills. You know, here's here's money so that you don't have to be sad anymore. <laughs> you know, my my innocent mind. <laughs> um, of course, I no longer think like that, but I do. That's still there. That energy is still there. There's this energy of people need abundance. And maybe if I become abundant, then I can help other people become abundant. So that they're no longer sad. So it just kind of expanded into this whole, you know, raising your vibration and expanding your consciousness and, you know, uh, being healthier and all of the other things that I talk about on this channel. You know, it, it just kind of shifted. It's the same energy, but it, it still went in that direction of trying to please people. And even in these videos, you know, there's an aspect of me that, you know, I want people to, to feel good after they watch my video. I don't want to come on here and, and like talk about stuff that's going to make people angry or make people sad or, you know, make people feel worse than, you know, whatever's going on in their life. So that, that people pleaser aspect, I've always played that out, but. I went to something else. I've always been easily manipulated. <laughs> always like in me being a people pleaser that opened up the door for me to get manipulated. And hey, you know, it is what it is. Um, luckily, I have a, a way of moving to where, you know, I, I keep going. I might, you know, be be sad while I'm still while I'm going, but you know, I'm I'm thinking like, dang, like, I can't believe that happened to me. I can't believe they, they did something like that. That whole victim mentality. So the people pleaser wanting to please other people, being easily manipulated, all of this stemmed from years ago. And I didn't know anything about my worth, you know, or uh, self-preservation or, um, Put, putting yourself first and, you know, putting your oxygen mask on first before trying to help the elderly and the children. I didn't know anything about that. So, of course, you're just out here and you just want to help people. You want to please people. I'm the center of my universe. I'm the originating point. I'm saying, hey, I don't put myself first. I, you know, I want to please others. I'm open for manipulation. So, of course, I'm going to get 
energies that are like, oh, really? You want to be a people pleaser? Let's get her. <laughs> and that's how you have to really look at your situations. You got to look at what didn't feel good and say, well, what did I do? What did I do to, to make that happen? So after, you know, trying to please others and getting used and manipulated and then feeling sad afterwards, it's like, well, I'll try it again. You know, I, I just kept doing it until eventually I, I got into a point in my life to where I realized like, oh, oh, it's vicious out here. This is a vicious world. I was so sheltered growing up. I, you know, I thought, I thought that my way of doing things was going to work and I didn't have to, you know, preserve myself. You know, I, what was I thinking? But it took me a minute to get to that point. Another thing. Oh, here's a good one. Um, trying to trying to prove my worth due to lack of attention. Now, I was having a a good conversation with my mother, and it hit me that unconsciously I feel like I didn't have parents. I know that sounds like really strange, but my parents were 40 and 42 when they had me. My parents were the age of grandparents for the people I was in school with. I didn't have any grandparents. I don't I don't know what that's like real grandparents. I didn't I didn't have those. So my parents were like their energy was grandparent type energy because by the time I was like walking and running and, and, and trying to do stuff, they, they didn't, <laughs> they weren't, they didn't have that energy anymore for me. So I was by myself. I was like a, I never thought about this, but I was like an orphan. I was like an orphan being raised by my grandparents. <laughs> That's what it felt like. And and luckily, I, I do have a design that um, allows me to be okay with being by myself. But looking at how early that started for me, I can see where my delay in having social skills <laughs> stems from. You know, like, I'm just now, like, really getting into the groove of learning how to have social skills and still at baby steps, you know, and I didn't even realize this, you know, so I can look at aspects of my, my timeline prior to this and I can see that I was always trying to prove something. I was always trying to, um, I guess, make up for that attention that I didn't get. And e even doing these YouTube videos, this could really be like a stemming factor to that. It, it could be that, you know, from my childhood, um, because I, you know, I was by myself all the time. I, you know, I didn't uh, have those social skills. I didn't have a whole lot of friends. I didn't, you know, I just didn't, didn't have all of that going on. And now here I am. And, and it could be that, yes, I, I still want to help people. I definitely want to help people. Um, I definitely want to, um, show people something that can make them feel better, you know, something that can uh, take them out of that, that misery and the anxiety and the hurt and the pain. And I know that I, I have something, you know, and it's, it's like there have been times where I have felt disappointed because people 
that were closest to me didn't didn't see the value in what I was trying to show them. They couldn't see that, hey, do you know that what I'm trying to show you can really make you feel better? It can make you be happier every day. It can, um, you know, but I didn't, I didn't understand, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just now in the last year <laughs> getting into that understanding of, oh yeah, it, it's, it might not be your path for this, you know, even though you could easily look at this and see for yourself that this could, you know, really help you, but it, it may not be meant for you to be helped this time. So that whole trying to, to prove my worth due to the lack of attention, I can see how all of that is, is all tied in. Like it's, is it's all there. And in being rejected in not being able to prove that I had something that was worthy of, you know, other people's a- approval and things like that. I can see how that caused me to feel negative towards other people. So it's like, hey, you know, I'm I'm trying to please you. I'm trying to show you something that's going to help you and you're rejecting it. So now, you know, I don't want to be your friend anymore, <laughs> you know, or, you know, you, you know, now I'm upset. I feel some type of way because you can't see that I'm really trying here. I'm really trying to prove myself to you. And this is a huge issue with children and their parents. And for me, (laughs) being 40 and 42 years apart from my parents, that was a struggle that I would have, I was never going to win. Never. Because I just realized that when I was born, they were already who they were. (laughs) And then I grow up. I grow up. So I put an extra 20, 30 years on their life and then try to say, okay, you know, I got, I got something now. I got something that's worthy. I got something that, you know, can, can really prove that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm smart. You know, I know some things that can help the planet. So here you are. You sh- you should just automatically do this because I am your child, <laughs> and it's ignored. <laughs> it's it's ignored, and that's coming from that whole thirty years ago. You know that lack of attention, that not feeling worthy, and trying to change something when there's absolutely no way that that you can change it you know it's just it's not going to happen and I see so many people my age people in their 20s people older than me who are still they are still trying to prove their worthiness to their parents and they don't realize that their parents Whatever happened to their parents, you really have nothing to do with it. Like what, whatever set them up in life to be who they were when they became your parents, you're trying to fix some stuff that was before your existence. You're, you're trying to, you're up against a huge wall with that. And now that I understand it, I'm like, I can't believe it took me this long to <laughs> to realize that I was never going to really change anything with them. 
you know I, it was it was not meant to be but it's important because your parents are your foundation they they kick it off you know like a lot of the spiritual attacks the psychic attacks a lot of it starts from the blaming of them a lot of it because I still hear the thoughts I still think about stuff and the more I learn I, I think like why why did my parents ever talk to me about this you know and I sometimes I find new things new you know negative thoughts that may pop up for a moment because I'm like so y'all just y'all didn't ever think to talk to me about this when I was a child things that I know that when I have children they're going to be like first on the list to talk about I never got these talks so I'm thinking like really like I never I never got this but then I shift over to oh I got to remember the era they were coming from what they went through as a child that I don't have anything to do with Okay, let me stop being the psychic spiritual attacker here. <laughs> let me stop it before, you know, there's some eruption between, you know, me and my parents for something real stupid. Let me just stop, you know. So it's it can be tricky. It can be really, really tricky because, once again, we don't know exactly where it's coming from. We just know that we're the originating point. That's if you resonate with that. If you can accept that, then it's a starting point for you to get to that awareness level. But everybody else, no, nobody is really like getting where it's coming from because it's like once it starts, once you come into the world, once you are the center of your universe, everything begins. Everything, you know, it's like energy flying back and forth you know psychic attacks coming from this way that way like it begins immediately as soon as you come out the womb you know as soon as you cry and your mother is trying to tell you you know stop crying you know shh don't do it you know that that's in some level in in some realm that's a psychic attack because there's a displeased energy you're an innocent little baby crying and your mother is irritated with you crying hey that is a very clear and evident energetic spiritual psychic attack when she tries to get you to stop crying if it's not done with love and compassion which a lot of times <laughs> you know it it's not always going to be love and compassion when our parents have their own lives that created them their own traumas their own psychic and spiritual attacks that created them into the adults that had you, you know, you see the, the, the continuation, the, the domino effect of this. So it's a lot, it's a lot to think about, but I'm saying all this to put into perspective and, you know, put some of my stuff out there. I want to be, you know, I'm talking about being the originating point. So I got to put some of my stuff out there and express how this works and how you can really get the gunk, that energetic spiritual gunk out of you that you may not even know is there. And it takes reflecting. It takes asking yourself, why? Where did this come from? And you can only get to that point by taking responsibility. You have to. You have to take responsibility for whatever has happened in your life. And understand that no matter how horrible a situation was, you can find how you were the originating point. How you attracted that energy into your life. So... If you're finding yourself spiritually, psychically attacked, look at the nature of the situation. Look at 
the person that you're getting the attacks from. Look at their life. Ask them questions if you if you feel that that may help because when you feel attacked by somebody that's close to you, you have a better chance of getting into things that they may not be aware of. So if it's an older person in your family who just, they always seem to be displeased with you or they have high expectations of you or whatever the case may be and you just always feel like there's something with this person, ask them questions. See, you know, if if there's something that is still lingering inside of them because there is and ask them questions that may get them to talking and revealing things to you so that you can heal that situation between you and that person now you may not get a whole lot of information if any but if your reality of that person that's constantly throwing stuff at you is they're mean or you know they're they're always fussing at me or you know something that just always makes you cringe then you can look at that and say they've been through something and it has nothing to do with me I'm just here I am making myself available for them to throw their blame out on and throw whatever they have bottled up inside of them. I am that punching bag for them because I'm making myself available. And if you can, if you can see that, then you may be able to see, well, why am I making myself available? Do, why do I feel as if I need to be here? Is it because that this person is, is my, um, my auntie that, you know, raised me for seven years of my life? Or, you know, you may feel like you're bound to certain people based on the amount of time that they've been in your life. You may feel that, oh, if, if I'm not here, then I'm wrong because I'm so used to being here. So you may have to look at yourself and say, wow, does that still apply to me? Because my body doesn't feel good when I'm here. So is my mind just so wrapped up in that program that I'm allowing myself to be in an environment with a person or people that there's there's nothing left here? A lot of times that that is the case for a lot of people. It's a mental programming from that time frame, that long time frame of dealing with those people. And there's that guilt, (laughs) that blame, because that's that's been the program the whole life. So if your family and friends are, are used to you doing something, Once again, like how I said in the first video, if they're used to you doing something, then they're going to always expect that until you snap out of it because you are the originating point. You're making yourself available. So they're not actually doing anything. You're allowing yourself to be that punching bag. You're allowing yourself to be attacked by them. If you're not there, they can't attack you. Just like... It takes two people to argue. If one person leaves, that person can still yell, but they're just yelling at themselves. So that is the situation with every encounter that we have in life. And the more that you're aware, the more that you are taking responsibility for being the center of your universe and for, you know, your world revolving around you. And everything that comes into your reality is because you are the originating starting point. Then 
you can move with a level of self-empowerment. Because if you know that you're going to walk into an environment with people that have this long timeline in your life and you already know, okay, auntie is going to act like this. She's going to start an argument about five minutes into me getting in the house, blah, 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 blah. If, if you're aware, then you can walk in there and have your timer set <laughs> so that you can walk out right before it starts. Or you can walk in there with a different attitude and a new shield so that when those attacks try to come, you can just deflect them. And you're not taking it personally. And you're recognizing that the only reason that these attacks are even coming my way is because I walked in the house. I got here. A shooter isn't going to shoot at something that's not the target. A shooter is looking for something specific. If someone is, is looking to shoot a, a deer, if they see a rabbit or a lion or some other animal, they're not focused on that. They're focused on that target that they want. That's what they want. So when you understand your place in your reality, you being the originating point, then you can understand your place in other people's realities. And you can operate in a different way. And disconnect yourself, if that's what needs to happen, or actually build your love and compassion for those people. To the point to where they realize that even though you're there, you're no longer being dismantled by the attacks like how you used to and then you may see a shift in them you may see them become more loving you, you never know you never know what can happen by you becoming more aware of yourself and taking that responsibility and it may get to a point to where they say you know we we don't want her coming over anymore you know because she doesn't let us beat up on her anymore and that's that's still a win-win situation for you so it's countless infinite scenarios when it comes to how these spiritual and psychic attacks happen but you are the receiver and the sender and it's okay to admit that it it really is and it's it's freeing it frees you when you can say my name is Asiya and I am a psychic attacker <laughs> sometimes you just got to do that you got to say hey I yes I, I I did it I take full responsibility for that situation escalating and, and getting out of hand I take responsibility for that situation starting because I am the starting point I am the originating point of that situation even coming into existence real quick before I end this video I had a few requests to do America's best friend Donald Trump but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to give you all a full reading on this man, but um, I will use his design to show you what I was saying earlier in the video about the conscious side and unconscious side. And I will also talk about the some of the gateways that he has that he has shown in public some of the darker aspects of these gateways and also share with you guys the more heavenly aspects of the gateways that he possesses so I spoke on how the personality side deals with our conscious side this is what we are aware of so this is everything in black as you can see these symbols are all in black and when you look at 
the lines, you'll see that there are some that are black, some that are red. The ones that are black, you will be able to find those numbers in correlation with the numbers in the shapes. And those that are black and red, that means that, for instance, this number 12. As you can see, number 12 is over here on the black side, and it is also over here on the, on the red side. So that's why it's striped like that. So everything that's red in Donald Trump, these are things that he is unconscious of. So he does not identify with these things that are in red. He, he wouldn't consciously identify with those things. For the things that are in black, he would say, oh yeah, I can identify with that. So that is all of us. All of us have 13 red activations within our design that we are unconscious of. So if someone was to say, hey, you have this particular characteristic, it would feel uncomfortable because we don't consciously identify with that. So I was speaking earlier when I used the example of um, the little girl, I spoke about the channel of mating. Donald Trump has the channel of mating, which is right here, gate 59 and gate six, and it's red. So Donald Trump has unconsciously operated throughout his life with this very high sexual energy. And I know recently he made a statement about women's sexual organs and uh, it sent the, the world into an uproar. So when I heard about that, I already knew where it was coming from. So hey, that's that's just an example of, of how these energies operate. But each one of these gates, each one of these numbers are a gate, and each one of these gates have two aspects to them. They have exaltation, they have a detriment. So imagine walking through a doorway. To the left, you have heaven. To the right, you have hell. That's kind of like, you know, just to give you a, a simple way of, of looking at it, that's the way all of these energies work. So for instance, gate 59 is the gate of sexuality. When you walk through the gateway of 59, the gateway of sexuality, to the left you have heaven, to the right you have hell. So the hell side of the gate of sexuality is dishonesty and also being intrusive. So anybody with gate 59, the gate of sexuality, activated in their design, the detrimental aspect of this particular energy is going to be dishonesty and being intrusive. So Donald Trump, as we can see, this, this energy is activated. So this is the energy that he's throwing out. Anything that's in your human design that's activated, this is energy that you put out to others. So he's unconsciously throwing out dishonesty. He's unconsciously throwing out being intrusive and he's been operating like this his whole life okay so we can apply that to the little girl from the example earlier she's unconsciously throwing out both aspects of gate 59 now the heaven side of gate 59 is intimacy and transparency so those are the the exalted aspects of the gate of sexuality intimacy and transparency so we may even see donald trump one day just show this intimate transparent energy in in a speech one day who knows but he has both sides but based on his lifestyle and his consciousness we we can see what we get more of we can see publicly <laughs> what he puts more of his energy towards unconsciously which is of course that dishonesty and being intrusive okay so 
on the other side of the channel of mating, we have gate six. Gate six is the gate of conflict. This is the gate of friction. So that's pretty much uh, what you get. You know, that's it's actually called the gate, the gate of friction. So you walk through the gateway of gate six, the gate of friction. On the hell side, you have conflict and friction. On the heaven side, you have what's called diplomacy and peace. So Mr. Donald Trump, he's throwing out conflict. He's throwing out friction. And we have seen some things within him that deal with diplomacy and peace. It's, it's interesting, but it's almost like when we see those little sprinkles of, of the heavenly side of gate six, it's almost like, whoa. But we can see that when it comes to the collective and how the collective is and has responded to Donald Trump, we can see that the collective is taking on these more so negative energies these <laughs> these hellish energies coming off of the different aspects within his design and one more that I'll talk about is this gate 36 gate 36 is called the gate of crisis yes it's called the, the gate of crisis so <laughs> you walk through Gate 36, <laughs> the hell side of gate 36 is being crisis prone. So this man, Donald Trump, is prone to crisis unconsciously. This is, this is his body. His body is imprinted with the gate of crisis. So he's walking around throwing out crisis energy. So what is he attracting? He's attracting crisis energy. The other part of the hell side of the gate of crisis is turbulence. So, you know, when, when we're dealing with turbulent energy, that is, that's not very comfortable. So you take turbulence, pair it up with being crisis prone. We see how the world reacted. We see the, <laughs> we see how upset people still are with Mr. Donald Trump being in, being in office. So, um, yeah. Now, the heavenly side of the gate of crisis is compassion and humanity. <sighs> now, I don't know how much of that we're going to get from Mr. Donald Trump, but, you know, we might see a few sprinkles here and there. We might see some sprinkles of compassion and some sprinkles of, of humanity. We might see it, you know, just pop out for a hot second, you know, before we go back into crisis crisis turbulent mode you know but these are just a quick few examples that um show what we all are dealing with in our own unique ways if you look at your your human design blueprint you'll see that you have areas of of power you know these activations are his power realistically the, these are the areas where you know, he, he reigns because this is what he is embodied with, you know, and, um, you have, you know, your own set of unique energies and your own specific design that operates in a certain way. So by you knowing what you're working with, you'll know if you are attracting crisis energy to you. You'll know if you're attracting conflict and, and friction to you. You'll know exactly what you're uh, attracting based on what activations you have. So, yeah, I just wanted to uh, give you all a visual of what I was saying earlier, just in case some of you all didn't quite understand. But remember, the personality side is what you're conscious of. The design side is what you're unconscious of. If you find yourself interested in this information, it would help you greatly 
to know all of this red stuff all of this unconscious stuff so that you can know why every time your personality side is telling you to do one thing your mind is telling you to do one thing your body has a whole nother plan a whole nother way of operating going on that is very confusing <laughs> for all of us at times okay so that's pretty much it thank you all for tuning in and watching if i have a part three that comes to me for this uh series of psychic and spiritual attacks i will be doing another video free your mind to shine until next time